Today I wanted to show you how to replace a notebook battery, show you how easy it is. This is an Asus or Asus or whatever you want to call it, X202E notebook. And it's pretty easy to replace these batteries actually. The hardest part is just making sure you've got the right battery. I'd recommend opening it up, seeing what the battery looks like and then comparing it to what you're purchasing. All we have to do is remove the screws on the back. Now when you're removing the screws, you want to make sure that you take note of where the different size screws go. You'll see here I've got uh, some smaller screws and some longer screws. The longer screws on this particular model go in the back, uh, probably because the hinge, that's where there's more uh, movement and stuff that uh, it needs more strength, so they need more threads to grab and stuff. So keep track of where the longer screws go. There's actually one here that's a little bit longer, it looks like, too. So now we'll just peel the cover off. Uh, on this one here, I'm going to start by the hinge area and kind of get it started and then work my way around. Forgot one screw. And there's your battery right here. So I've already had this battery out so that I knew which battery to order. And there's a few screws to hold this in and one connector. There's one connector here. And that just lifts up and then there's some screws around the perimeter and again make sure you take note of any screws that are any longer or shorter so that you get them in the same spot in case anybody's wondering that blue stuff that's on there is a loctite i don't know if you can see that that's Loctite. It just helps to keep the screws from rattling loose. If you want to put some Loctite on there to keep the, your screws in there, it'd probably be a good idea. If there's a little bit of blue stuff on there, it'll probably uh, help keep your screws locked in place. So you probably don't really need to, but uh, you can also use like a nail, clear nail polish or something like that to secure the screws. I believe that's all the screws for the battery. So now we just lift the battery out. Oh no, missed one. Now we can just lift it out. There's the battery. <clears throat> if you notice your battery is fat, it's kind of has like kind of it, it isn't con it isn't a consistent thickness all the way through if it's swollen in the middle or something sometimes that's a good indication that the battery is is faulty or defective uh, typically a lot of these flat packs will swell up it looks like this one's actually consists of two flat packs one here and one here you can see when I flex it there's that a bend in the middle so there's probably a, a joint there or something so yeah you might notice some swelling that's a good indication that these uh, flat packs are this one is still flat so it's probably not too bad but here's where you get the uh, the part number for the battery that you're looking for so 
So yeah, you look for that C21X202. And you want to get something that's close to the same milliamp hour rating. Higher is better, but generally a lot of um, battery manufacturers will lie about the, the correct milliamp hour or the watt hour. But yeah, this, this will be consistent. 7.4 volts should be consistent. This number might be a little bit higher, might be a little bit less. Uh, the higher the number, generally, the longer your battery will last. But again, keep in mind, there are manufacturers of batteries that are kind of deceptive about these two numbers. And I ordered a battery. It came in a box. There's the part number. This one says it's 500 milliamp hour. So it should, should be similar. The other one was 5136. So pretty close. And there is some, uh, some information on here on what to do if the battery is not uh, like when you first install it you should they want you to charge it up completely to make sure that it gets its full charge and uh, one of the things it does say is to charge the battery up well let's see if I can get that in focus charge the battery up to 100% if it doesn't get to 100% disconnect the battery and start charging it again uh, I guess it has something to do with the the intelligence of the charging system inside the computer may not like what it sees at first. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure the battery is charged up 100%. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the new battery in and we're going to charge it up 100%, disconnect the battery, plug the battery back in and, and plug it in and let it charge again. Just make sure that it gets fully charged. there's the new battery it doesn't have the quite the same rating but the important part is it's got 7.4 volts oops they both have 7.4 volts this one has a slightly higher milliamp hour rating and slightly higher um, watt hour rating that's this is the original one that's not lasting anymore so so this this new one is a little bit but th that's very insignificant that's very little and it's also missing the asus or asus or whatever you however you want to pronounce it so we'll see if this but how long this battery lasts and how good it is so we're going to put the battery in and we want to get this connector plugged in and now I found with uh the battery that I purchased that uh, if you mount the battery first and then try and plug that in you won't get it in and it seems like the wires here are just like two millimeters too short I don't know why they would do that so we're gonna have to make sure that gets plugged in and this thing the battery's in position before we screw down of course bizarre so yeah make sure you plug that in before you get the battery in place and you may have to try and force it into place this one like I said it seemed like the wires here were too short to actually put the battery in first and then plug this connector in so get that plugged in first I like to put in all the screws loosely get them all in place and then go through and tighten them
And with the old battery, you'll see there's this foam piece. That's probably there just to push against the back cover to keep that connector plugged in. So we'll, we'll try and salvage that by peeling that off and sticking it on the new one. That's just going to keep that connector from coming unplugged as easily. Uh, with it. When the back cover's on, there's that one screw that goes through the center there. It'll help hold that uh, connector in place so it doesn't come, out, come off when you're moving it around. Okay, so let's hook up power and tur turn it on. So Ubuntu finished loading, and in the upper right-hand corner here is a battery meter. So we're just going to wait until the... It gets to 100% charge there before we put the cover on. So I'm going to let that go and uh, we'll come back and check on it in a bit. Now that it's fully charged, I'm going to unplug it and let it discharge completely. Uh, I'm not sure if the machine, if this will go to sleep. I'm not sure what the settings are on this. But we want to try and drain it down and then recharge it. It takes three to four times of charging it, discharging it. So the first time I'm going to do it, and then I'm just going to tell my nephew to make sure he charges it up, unplugs it, and then lets it discharge completely as he uses it. So we'll let that go and see how long it lasts. Looks like it's supposed to last 10 hours. We'll see if that's true. So here I've drained it down to 7%. Now I'm going to charge it back up to 100% and we'll see how long it lasts. Now that it's fully charged, I think it's safe to put the back cover on because we won't have to unplug the battery. So we'll put the back cover on and then uh, just use it as normal, but fully charge and discharge it at least four more times. So we'll put the cover on and there's some clips on the ends in a few spots. So we just have to make sure we clip that on properly. I'm going to clip it on. It looks like the... Um, the keyboard area has some hooks where you have to kind of slide it on. So you will slide that on first and then it kind of snaps on and by the hinge. So remember the smaller screws go in by the keyboard edge. The longest one was here and then along the back is where the other long screws go. Okay, it's all done. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.